Hey, welcome to the Hope Sessions podcast, which is hosted by Jerry D. It is a weekly podcast where each week we will have a different guest on to chat and have them share their story of how they came to faith in Jesus and how he has changed their lives. So tune in and be encouraged by the different stories from ordinary people about an extraordinary God. Remember, hope is to life as oxygen is to the body. Enjoy the show. Guys, welcome to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast. You are so welcome. I'm really honored just for you guys. I want to thank you guys for tuning in so faithfully with each episode and helping me spread the message with this podcast series on all your platforms, with all your friends, with all your family. But with this episode, I've got a really special friend. I've known this guy for maybe just over a year, but I'm just very thankful for just what the Lord has done in both mine and his friendship. Um, his name is Nathaniel. To me, he's a living legend. Nathaniel, welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm good, Jerry. Thank you so much for having me in your podcast. It means a lot. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. You're looking well as ever. Listen, man, we're just going to jump straight into it, right? Rather than just sitting around, right? I'm going to do a rapid fire round. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Brilliant. Are you a morning person or a night person? Morning person. What's your favorite sport? Basketball. Your favorite team? Golden State Warriors, of course. Your favorite player? Stephen Curry. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's right. That's right. We may be without Clay Thompson this year, but that doesn't change yeah. anything. I yes, still think really. Steph Curry is the MVP by far. He is indeed. Yeah. Brilliant, man. Your favorite meal? Chicken biryani. Brilliant. Brilliant. And your favorite book that you've ever read? Oh, wow. That's a question. I am not a book person, so okay. I can't say anything. I, I don't read much. Except for Bible. Oh, man. It's no problem at all. Um, Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify. Yeah. Spotify just make it so easy, man. It, it does, yes. You know, like, I was a Google Play Music fan because okay. of the quality, but it died now. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for Spotify. Yeah. Because I, I was on, I remember I was on Apple Music, right? And I was talking to Fletch about this. So I was mm -hmm. on Apple Music and it just... I don't like how the, the app is. It just looks so stupid and so pointless. And even like the one thing I love about Spotify is, you know, at the end of the year, they do that thing called Spotify Wrapped, where yes. they calculate all your minutes, what genre music. I love that sort yeah. of stuff. So you can see, oh, you discovered this many artists. And I just think Spotify is just really the way forward, just in the streaming platform, you know? Yes, it does. It, I like the algorithm as well. I mean, being an IT student, yeah. it's good. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. I'm um, see. I, I, when it comes to that, I'm kind of bet between both. Netflix, from you know the shop TK Maxx. Yeah. Netflix is kind of like TK Maxx, right? Sometimes you go in there and there's loads of great stuff on sale, and you're gonna buy the whole rail. Other times you go in there four or five times in a row and there's nothing. Do you know? That's true. Can That's I change my answer to YouTube now? <laughs> that's why i like youtube because youtube's great for like obviously i'm a big sports fan so i'll watch a lot of yeah. like, interviews highlights that sort of stuff so youtube is kind of very easy to find stuff that you're interested cool. in and stuff like that so it's really cool because i i just realized that i spend more time on youtube than netflix because because of that sports and technology yeah it's brilliant um what's your favorite hobby Apart from basketball, okay, photography, photography, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Um, your favorite clothing brand? <sighs> wow. Um. Between, like, I mean, I like Nike and Under Armour. Yeah, I thought you were gonna. I'm gonna, that. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give it to Under Armour. Okay, okay. It's a tough question. It's a tough question. I'll give it to Under Armour. Being loyal to Steph Curry, I understand that. I, I would be the same way myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, tea or coffee? Coffee. Are you are you one of those people that like you need like four cups of coffee before you start your day or? I used to be that way, and I took it all on my health, so I'm just one cup person per day now. Oh, so you I used to have like four that. cups per day. It, it was bad. It was bad. No, I'm just one. I'm telling you, man, I'm so thankful that I don't <laughs> like coffee. I like tea, but I drink maybe two cups of tea a year. Oh, wow. Like that. Like, 
when okay. I wake up, all I need is just maybe like a glass of juice or maybe sometimes water. Mm-hmm. And I look this good all the time when I wake up, you know, I've just been yeah, right. in the looks department, you know, so yeah, it's effortless to look yeah, this no. good, you know. Oh, that, that makes sense. That makes thanks. Thank you for the beauty secret now. No problem, man. Follow and now. the last one I have with the rapid fire round, man, is what's your favorite childhood memory? Oh, wow. Uh, that's okay. it's, it's, I don't think I can give it in a rapid fire. I need to think now. You can give a couple if you want. There's no pressure whatsoever, man. Oh, my childhood memory. So, yeah, I. I have one which is very tangible. The day I got my my first bicycle, yeah, I was so happy. Person, I was so happy when I don't remember. It was I. I don't know whether I was five years old or six years old. I don't, I don't remember, but um, I wanted that cycle, and and it was it was like my dad bought myself. I but my dad bought cycle to my like for my sister. And yeah. I thought I didn't get it, but there was a cycle in, in like behind it as well. I mean, I mean, I know that's it's a that's a little one, but it's it's kind of tangible memory as a childhood. Yeah, now yeah. I have so many, honestly speaking. Brilliant. That's great, man. Listen, that's the rapid fire round over, man. And and as you're aware, and the guys listening, this is the Hope Sessions podcast where yeah. we want to get to know you about what the Lord has done in your life. So would you maybe, man, for the next five, 10 minutes or whatever you're comfortable with, just share your story, maybe from growing up. I know you were born in India. You can explain that yourself and and how the Lord brought you over to Ireland and just what he's doing in your life for us. That would be great. Yeah, sure. um, So before that, I'll just have a sip of water. All right, man. You actually don't have to ask that. I give you full permission. (laughs) Thank you so much. Yeah. So... um, I was a I, I, I was born in a Christian family. Uh, my my father and my mother are four. I'm I'm the fourth generation Christian in my family. So we have like third. Oh uh, yeah, like my grandparents on both sides are Christians. Uh, so Christianity is 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 not new to me at all. But that doesn't define my my hope and faith in Jesus Christ uh, as a person. Like I mean, as a person, like individual. I have so many stories from the day I was born. When I say from the day I was born, it is true. I was, um, no one knows this. Uh, probably most of them don't know that I was born with an extra head on my head. Whoa. This is quite shocking to everyone, like whoever is listening. Yeah. So I was, I was, if my head was this much, there was another, uh, there was another bulge like that, Whoa. right? And uh, my mom and dad were like too scared because I'm the youngest of all. There is like seven and a half years gap between me yeah. and my sister. So, right. Um, and there, like after a few days passed by, my mom and my aunt, my brother, my dad's sister, they were like, it, they were like praying hard for me. I mean, she, she tells this testimony till date, my mom, right. Um, so the, the the surgery was tomorrow. Yeah. Let's say we, we had to get it off the. Uh, I mean there was a there was a backstory there. Um, we had to get the doctor said you have to get that thing done by surgery. Like I mean you can't remove it off. Like I mean there is actually there is no there is not hard bone here. I have the it's it's a curvature bone like like that. I have that yeah. until date. So um, my mom was scared like like yeah. very scared right and uh, she used to pray she prayed a lot that night and she slept by next day morning this thing was gone it was on the bottle cap size but wow. overnight my mom was like shocked and she praised god, praise god. and when she, when she tells that testimony um have so many and that's step one right and step two my mom was diagnosed with cancer okay. right um uh, she had a breast cancer and I was very young, like very, very young. Um, uh, I remember, like, I'm a mean, long story short. I rem- I never saw someone. I mean, she's a medical person. She's a nurse by profession. Yeah. But I, uh, after the surgery, everything was successful. I was the youngest person, uh, y- youngest kid. I was, I was not even 10. I, I think I was 10 years old or something. I was not allowed to go into, uh, into the ICU. My aunt smuggled me behind her sari into the ICU. 
he actually literally smuggled me um into it like and i and i saw, and i saw my mom there i still have that vision of my mom there and i asked one que- uh, she asked me a question i didn't ask her anything okay she asked me one question she she, she could barely even speak she was like did you eat and i was like at that moment i was like lord i i, I walked out of that icu praying that lord i want my mom to be well yeah. and from that day i was too young and from for that age to know god is like a childish thing for me mm. um and then this is this is two stories i want like i mean people to encourage now yeah long story short my mom is cancer free yeah, praise god for that yeah. it's been uh, so the reason i'm growing my hair is because i want to grow it for a year and year or year and a half go back to home like i'm in fly back to india and donate my hair to the cancer society so oh. that's if you see me in church with long hair what is this bear doing in the church yeah that's the reason <laughs> bear <laughs> all right um yeah and um, there are so many things fast forward to me moving to ireland yeah. i actually wanted to um fly to australia to do my masters i eventually got a seat in australia uh, which was monash university this is one of the uh, best universities in the world oh like let's say top 100 you know one of the top 100 universities in the world yeah. i i got i got i got into it i got into that university uh, it was too expensive it was 48000 per year wow. which is two years um for cyber security yeah and then uh my 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 mom was like we tried but i didn't pray then right yeah. and we tried i i tried everything to go into australian university but i it, it didn't happen uh, and then i tried um canada then the, uh, for the canada process this is this is a silly story for september for january's intake it like i mean let's say i want to join next year jan yeah. and this year uh by june the applications was done like they were closed yeah. and i was praying because i wanted to move out of out of the country and i just wanted to study and everything and then one of my clo- one of my childhood friend he was like hey why don't you apply for ireland mm-hmm. and i was like now at this point of time i gave up hope like i'm i was like nothing is happening and and then I I applied for Ireland before applying I was like I prayed for a week I fasted and prayed and then I was like lord I want to go out and pursue my studies in cyber security yeah so please may all will be done and Ireland came into picture and I was like lord I'm applying I prayed that I'm applying for Ireland so please take yeah. care of it sure and in no time I got two offers from Ireland one from ucd and one from nci so i had to choose i yep. chose nci but the story doesn't end there we need money to fly to ireland yeah and i needed a loan sure so you won't believe we roamed a lot for like i mean i i had a lot of banks like i mean for the loan and everything my loan got rejected seven times wow for no apparent reason for no apparent reason my loan got rejected seven times at that point of time my mom got retired from her service so she had some money yeah but but still i i didn't want it to depend on her and then uh i my loan didn't get uh, approved for seven times it was so frustrated right and then we were praying my mom and myself we were like literally praying and asking god like how do we do this yeah and like something spoke to my mom she was like um uh, she said like god is like asking me to give you money like i mean you already have money why don't you have why why do you want to ask someone else you yeah. send your son out of this country with your money which eventually happened sure that happened for good because we do not have to like i mean i do not have to did not have to pay the loan and have that financial stress in me yeah you get what i'm saying yeah. so this they did all these did not happen i'm stay, i'm sharing bit by bit from the day is because these all these events i don't think humanly it is possible yeah i mean these are these are not um um i mean 
done by human intervention it's it's only because of we having faith god working in us yeah. we having trust in god pray, submitting everything in prayer that's right you know what i'm saying um yeah. and 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 believing in him and trusting him these are the these are the faith points yeah i'm here standing here and boldly claim that yes i believe in lord jesus Christ, and yes i believe i trust him in 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 my future so i have that hope amen no matter how much darker the days are we always have the rock in our lives which is lord jesus christ and his promises right. yeah and 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 if we are in that dark times yes we are in there but we are not alone mm. i was in there i was not alone i was i was there in the dark times the day i was born Amen. i saw my mom in that dark times the like i'm in at the age of 10 and yeah. i was while i was moving out of the country i was in that storm in the dark times but i was not alone in in those stages yeah i saw god moving and 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 is his his protection if we go i mean in that thing if you if you, let's say if you're looking if you're looking the problem way too close yeah it's it's hard to, yeah. to you know solve it that's right but if, if if even if the problem is too close and if we have jesus behind like i mean beside us is yeah. like hey don't do this just move around this way and that way he'll guide us yeah so jerry that's i i don't want to take so much of time but that is that is um a tiny bit of there's the there's a lot to it so yeah. those are the three stages i wanted to explain Yeah. Uh, on 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 how my faith stands how what's the hope uh, i mean uh, the hope ah i forgot english i'm so sorry yeah, you're right man all good yeah 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 that's the, that's the journey i had so far which Brilliant. is perfect yeah yeah man listen thanks for sharing i even like i'm encouraged by hearing that like even even from when you were born you know you you had that um growth on the back of your head and how your mom prayed to the lord who healed you overnight man that's that's a powerful statement and even how you've seen the lord um out working your mom's life your mom's example of faith and then you know you've encountered that for yourself you know and even to see how you planned to go to australia canada like you know proverbs talks about you know acknowledging the lord in all your ways and he shall direct your path it also talks about how um I'm paraphrasing how a man can make plans but the lord determines or orders his steps and it's pretty clear man to see that that the lord has ordered your steps here to ireland he's also yeah. placed you in our church he's ordered all that before time even began you simply were just walking yeah. in it and i know for sure. me man i've deeply been encouraged by your friendship and i i think you know that by now but i want to say that publicly okay. because it's mad to think just how quick both me and you connected i'll, I'll never forget it it was a sunday night at young adults at court church um, and yes. maybe someone's watching this podcast check out young adults at court church on youtube and and instagram a phenomenal ministry that i love attending every week but i remember man it was a sunday night i was talking to um i was talking to fletch danny and nathan cassidy and in you came in you were in my pastor pat and and you were talking to him and as soon as as you you were just coming up behind me pastor pat said oh and jerry's a really big uh, golden state warriors fan as well and i was just like oh lord thank you for this provision you know and but lo and behold from that day forward me and you have just been yeah. chopping up about all things basketball man and and just even been able to just grow in our friendship i mean it's probably the the first friendship i've had that has developed so quickly yet so spontaneously yeah you know so i'm very thankful for that man and thank you for sharing your story as well because me and you don't know the impact of of this conversation man and we we won't yeah. this side of eternity we'll never know because you know yeah. people can be afraid to reach out and send a text or or let you know you yeah. encourage them so we trust the lord that many will be reached encouraged and comforted by just even this dialogue man but even yeah. coming to the, the 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 final part of this podcast session right i like to ask my guests just a couple of questions um you have not heard these questions but don't worry this is not school this is a jerry d hope sessions podcast and i'm going to ask you a couple of questions man are we ready to go yep hopefully <laughs> yes no problem man no need to be sweating all right just relax okay yeah, fine. yeah what's your favorite scripture or passage of scripture or book in a bible that you will go to you know that that's something that has en- always encouraged you or helped you or uh psalms 91 
Brilliant. The reason. The reason is because I'm always, I'm not a scared person because when I moved out of of that that comfort zone, right? Yeah. This is the scripture which gave me protection, because yeah. if you read it upside down, it speaks about whoever dwells the in the light. Ah, ah, God, sorry. And sorry. It, it it speaks about it speaks about the God's protection. Yeah. It speaks about it mainly speaks about God's protection and comfort. So, yeah. It should be well, Psalms 91. It was actually funny enough now that you mentioned Psalm 91, man. Um, I was having a conversation with someone on the phone. It was maybe over a month ago. And we were talking about, you know, about how, yes, we have faith and we believe that God is going to protect us. But even with this whole COVID situation, you know, that's not to say that, yes, God protects us. But does that mean that we just were stupid, that we don't social distance, that we don't wear face masks and stuff? Mm-hmm. No. We need to still abide by those protocols, wearing the masks, and and that's your that's a way of, of loving your enemy in that man. It's interesting how in Psalm ninety one, Satan used the same that Psalm to tempt Jesus three times in, in the Gospels, as we're aware of, you know. And it's it's really interesting that you even touch on that. I think it's a beautiful Psalm for those of you that have not read Psalm ninety one. Maybe you don't have a Bible. Listen, Google Psalm ninety one. You can get a free Bible there on Google. Download yeah. it. That's Psalm 91. But the next question I have, man, is, and it's probably one of my favorite questions that I love asking people because it's always interesting just the response I get from this question. And the question is, what is something that you know now that you wish you knew when you were younger? Oh, wow. Interesting, huh? Yeah. It is in the... Uh... Should it be in the lecture or it, can it be can it be anything? Listen, that's that's what the question is. It can be anything. All right, I'll I'll, I'll answer this in my career point of view. Yep. Um, if I if I had like I mean if I know about cyber security or now it's booming, right? If sure. if I knew the technology and cyber security way too younger. Yeah, like maybe in my schooling, mm. I would have been a better, better analyst or better, better in in a career wise. Okay, if that answers the question because that's yeah. the only thing which I think right now. There, there might be many things, but at yeah. this point of time, I'm 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 just thinking that, like I'm in a career perspective. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's that's a that's a valid answer. I mean, that's something related to you. Yeah. It's a personal question, so no answer mm. is wrong. I know for mm-hmm. me, even to come back on what you're saying there, man, um, I've learned a lot of things. Obviously, I'm 25 now, so I've, you know, you go through your teenage years and leaving home yeah. and all that, and, you know, you naturally become independent and all that good stuff. Yeah. But, but there's one thing that I'm so thankful that not only have I learned, but that the Lord has freed me from, and it's sure. the opinions of people. Yeah. But there's one thing I know for sure, one million percent confidence in my heart, People are not thinking about you because they're always thinking about themselves. We can become so inward focused, you know, how am I being perceived? Um, how do I maintain my, uh, my reputation and, and all this stuff? And the reality is, man, when you know your identity and your yeah. security in Christ, that yeah. he's the only one that's going to be there when the waves of life come in and, and may destroy every other foundation that's not of him, that his opinion towards you doesn't change. People can be very fickle, man. Like they, they like you one minute, and then the next minute they don't, or you may say something stupid, and suddenly they could get bitterness in their heart towards you or whatever. Like I remember someone said this to me a long time ago, but it stuck with me. They said people are like a hot water bottle. When they're mm-hmm. refilled, they're hot because the hot water is inside. Then they go cold, and then they need refilling. True. Sure. And I'm not sure if that's making sense, but to me, that's a powerful analogy. You're hot, you're cold, you need refilling, you know? And that's just even for me, that's okay. definitely something that I've learned, man, just even in life. I mean, I, and it's amazing now that I know it, that in my heart, I can see it in, in life. I can see how people can become so, you know, obsessed with, with how they look and, and my picture's oh, not yeah. filtered enough and, this doesn't have enough likes and all this stuff. Listen, likes mean nothing. They don't, all it does is keeps Instagram, Facebook in business. That's it. 
and that's it. Do you know what I mean? It's it's amazing how you can base the success of your social media based on your reposts, your shares, your follows, your likes. Like that's as true. NF, as the as the famous rapper NF says, "Let it fade, let it all fade." Yeah. That's just powerful, man. Um, yeah. And the last question I have, and this is another interesting question I have, and um, because every person I've asked this question to so far has never given the same answer as anyone on my podcast session so far. And the question is this, if you could have dinner with three people, either dead or alive, who would it be and why? And this disclaimer, disclaimer, you don't have to say Jesus because Jesus is ruling and reigning in your heart. So yeah. he's already there. He's busy. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So three people together or three yeah. can i can i choose do you know what you, you can say three people together or you can say three individual dinner dates whatever you feel yourself man just three people and why anyone yeah anyone dead or alive anyone dead or alive well oh that's a question i need to choose wisely all right first alive is of course first thing is Stephen Curry why I, not I, I knew it I was going to say it I love it <laughs> yeah Stephen Curry why uh, because he uh, like I mean if, if I mean whoever is not basketball fan yeah. uh, I, uh, and whoever knows the basketball they know the story um, yeah. because he was he was not the top picks at all right. he he took uh, Golden State Warriors from nothing to something. That's right. Um, he's, um, I, I, I want to ask so many questions on how, and you know what? He is the world's best shooter, but yes. he is, I'm he sad. has bloody vision. He is a bloody vision guy. He doesn't have clean sight. Oh, really? So, yeah, he doesn't have a clean sight. I mean, he, he, he had to undergo laser surgeries. Oh. He doesn't have the clean sight like us. Okay, so he's the world's best shooter and he can't even see the hoop. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Fun fact. So yeah, that that why is because uh I, I need to ask him more que- like I mean I want to ask questions like this. How do he dedicate himself for practice? Yeah. And uh how where like I mean I want to ask him questions about his faith. Yeah. Because he's a Christian and That's being right. a girl, dad of three people, and 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 managing his 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 identity, his his profession That's and right. faith, yeah. um, and and being with how he how is he manage like I mean, managing all that, all of that, and and yes, he's a human being in the end. Yeah. Um, uh, there there are chances of him falling apart, but. Right. It, it's God who's who who is who is in control in them. So I want to I want to ask these questions, yeah. and the second person. Whew, this is a tough one: the dead or alive. Can I choose from a character from Bible? No. As I said, anyone, right? Well, like, oh, yeah. I mean, the Bible has, is is most likely dead now, but they're fully yeah. alive in heaven. So you can say whoever you want, man. Dead or alive, Bible characters, not whatever you feel. Already, uh, you pick the best shooter in the world who can't see the rim properly. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't in the it, like. I mean, he even told in, in in the interview that he had to undergo some laser surgery to see the hoop properly. Wow. Yeah. I'm never. Um, I'm never gonna actually view him or look at him the same way again. I'm gonna be in even <laughs> more of awe of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um i would go the second person would be job from bible the, okay. the, the character job yeah the reason is because he had everything yeah. he lost everything That's and right. he gained everything mm-hmm. i want to ask that question how on earth did you have faith when you lost everything job yeah. like can you please explain me yeah can you i mean I would, I would having that chicken tikka masala and roti with him and, and sit down with him and I'm like, can you please tell me the yeah. journey of your experience? Like how, how, like, I mean, what's the thought process? I mean, how, how did you maintain that? Yeah. 
Um, so that's the character. I like. I mean, I, that's the person I would have a dinner with. And third person, it's so tough, man. You are. This is this is so tough. This this is gonna take time. The third person. Sorry, man. That's why it causes people to think on the spot, and, and I like that. You know. Yeah, it does, and it creates an awkward silence. <laughs> There's no awkward silence here, anyway. On my side, I'm cool. Ah. Uh, oh wow. Third person. Uh, 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 uh. Do you know the evangelist John Wesley? I've heard of him, yeah. I haven't listened to much of his stuff or that, but yeah, I've heard of John Wesley, yeah. The, I mean, I... No, he is too busy to have. I think he, he had 45,000 sermons preached in his entire life. Oh. That is... That is six sermons a day, maybe. Wow. Six to seven sermons a day. Oh my goodness! Wow. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't choose him <laughs> because he's too busy. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you sit down at dinner with him, he's just writing a sermon while you're just talking. He's like, "Yeah, no problem." Two seconds there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the third person would be my mom. Awesome. She, she, because I miss her. I miss her a lot. I would. I would sit down with her right now. And 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 just chat anything. Yeah. She's she's Stephen Curry fan as well because I introduced. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I would, the third person would be my mom. Honestly speaking, um, because she is my role model. Yeah, she is. She gave everything, and yeah. and yeah, yeah. Like job, she's man. the third person alive now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That's great, man. So you pick Steph Curry, who is the greatest shooter who can't see the rim properly. Um, you pick Job, who, as you said, he had everything, lost everything, and gained it back. I mean, that's a remarkable story in and of itself. Yeah. If you guys watching this podcast haven't read the book of Job or heard about Job, I would encourage you to just to check out his story and just see the journey he was on. And it might even build your own faith in who he is. And then Nathaniel touched on his mom. I second that, man. My mom is at that table before anyone else, um, remarkable yeah. woman. I'm very thankful for my own mom. Yeah. This is the example yeah. of a godly woman she is in, in the spite, in the midst of the storms of life, how she's yeah. steadfast in her faith in the Lord. That's been a remarkable testimony to me, man. But listen, I want to take a moment, man, to, to publicly thank you for just coming on this podcast. Um, no problem. You are a dear friend to me. We talk a lot off camera anyway, so to me it's not yeah. hard to brag on you. I mean, every time yeah. we hang out, it's always good vibes. We could talk about yeah. anything and have the best conversation ever. And that's what I love about you, man. But guys, for those of you that have tuned into another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast, thank you so much. Thank you for your ongoing support, your encouragement. And I would even ask that you will continue to share these episodes with your friends, your family, your friends, friends, cousins, sisters, brother. It doesn't matter who you send it to. Send it to everyone. Like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you next week for another episode. Remember, guys, that when we talk about hope, we are not talking about a theory, about an object, about a sensation. We're talking about the person of Jesus Christ. And let me leave you with this Amen. beautiful quote. Hope is to life as oxygen is to the body. And that person of hope, his name is Jesus. And you can know him Amen. today if you call out to him. Um, but yeah, Amen. guys, stay safe. Uh, tune in for next week for another episode of, of the Hope Sessions podcast. And we look forward to chatting more with a new guest about the same things again. God bless you. Stay safe. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Hope Sessions podcast with me, Jerry D. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure that you never miss an episode. Also, if you could leave a review and share it with your friends to help spread the word about this podcast, it would be a massive help. Take care and see you next time. Remember, hope is to life as oxygen is to the body.